Hi everyone, I'm Tova. Thanks for joining. Today's class is going to be a sweet mix of vinyasa and yin, my two favorite things put together. So let's get on our mats and get ready to practice. Soften your knees and bow your head. Inhale, lengthen your back as you look forward. Flatten your back. Reach for the floor, stepping or hopping back, and then easing yourself down, elbows wrapping the ribs. Turn the toes under and inhale for a nice, gentle, easy cobra. Just letting your body wake up here. Release and press up and back to downward facing dog. Add a mukha svanasana. Drawing your belly button in and up towards your heart. Soften your knees so that you can tip your hips high. Maybe pedaling your feet a couple of times. Just working out any kinks. Loosening up. And then settle back into downward dog. Check to make sure your neck is long and loose. Your ear should touch your arm bone if you tip it to the side. Look to your hands, hop or step forward. Exhale, relax your back, lower your head. And then inhale, big giant breath, come all the way up. And bow them back down for another salutation. Fold forward. Release your neck. Soften your knees. Inhale. Straighten your back. Lift a little. Reaching for your mat. Stepping or hopping back. Easing yourself down. Elbows by your sides. Inhale for cobra. Lift your chin and eyes. And exhale. Press to downward facing dog. Looking to your hands. Hopping or stepping there. Exhale. Folding forward. And inhale, big strong breath. Come all the way back to the top. Maybe back bend at the top. Exhale as you swan dive back down. Inhale, lengthen, lift. And exhale as you reach for the floor and keep exhaling as you lower. Maybe taking upward dog here, if that's part of your practice, or staying with cobra. Moving to downward facing dog. Lifting the hips, lengthening your back. Rooting all of your knuckles into the mat. Raise your left leg and step it up to your hands or boost it if it needs a little help to get there. And then windmilling up, turning open to the side of your mat. Point your toes out towards the corners of the mat. As you drop your seat, bend your knees and then bring your arms up, like kind of a 90 degree bend in your arms. Fingers reaching for the roof and eyes turning up for God or goddess pose. You are strong. Pressing up, straighten the legs, stretch your arms out, and then we're coming into eagle arms only here. So crossing the arms, let's go with our um, right arm on the bottom, and then squeeze together. Perfect, lift the elbows up off your chest, and then release the arms, stretching out, turning to the back of your mat, coming into warrior two here, bending your new front knee, Excellent. Let's windmill all the way down, putting your hands down to your floor, your mat. Step it back as you lower. Inhale, take a little vinyasa here, a little back bend, cobra or upward dog. Release and find downward facing dog. Lifting your left leg again here as we complete this series. Step the foot up to the hands, windmill up and open to the side of your mat. Scoot your heels in so your toes are pointed outward and then come into that squat position. Lift the arms, lift your eyes, be strong here. And then press up, straighten the legs, coming back into eagle, right arm on the bottom. Lifting the elbows up. And then release the arms, open from that stretch. Windmill back down, bringing yourself back to the front of your mat. Stepping back to plank, lowering, taking a vinyasa here, turn the toes, 
Inhale, cobra or upward dog. And exhale into downward facing dog. Finding downward dog. And we're gonna go into some knee bends here or frog bends. So I want you to point your toes out to the corners just a little bit here. And then let your knees flare out to the sides as you bring your bum down like a frog. And then press back up to straight and bending back down and pressing back up. And one more time, bending and straightening the legs. And now here's where you may wanna have a little bit of fun as we bring our toes back to forward. Either just bending your knees straight down towards your mat here and bringing them back to straight. Or if you're feeling a little bit more energetic today and you wanna add a couple hops to that, just hopping, little donkey kick, lift, lift, lift. So taking a couple of hops or taking a couple of knee bends, your choice here, and then settling back into downward facing dog when you're done. Perfect. And let's bring our elbows down to our mat, coming into dolphin pose. So this is very similar to downward dog, but instead of being on your hands, you're on your elbows or elbows are on the mat. So this is good if you have any wrist issues, you could always switch to dolphin instead of downward dog in your practice. Now let's take a lift of the right leg, lifting at any amount, just challenging your core here. And of course, if that is too intense for you, then you're gonna bring your foot back down. Good, replace the foot to the floor. And if you lifted it, let's try to lift the left leg a little bit here. And your goal is to not let yourself tip side to side. It's really to remain straight, even though one leg is lifted. Replace the foot back to the ground. Pressing back up to downward facing dog. Raise your right leg here and step it or help it up to your hands. Windmilling up, opening to the side of your mat as we come back to God or Goddess, pointing the toes out, sink your tail, arms nice and strong here, gaze up towards the roof. Perfect, straightening up, coming into Eagle Pose, going the opposite way this time, left arm on the bottom, pinching together or give yourself a big giant hug if that's a little bit tight in Eagle for you. And then opening the arms, turning to look towards the back of your mat as you come into warrior two, strong and stable here, windmilling down to your mat, hands placed beside your foot, step back, taking a vinyasa here, lowering, inhale, cobra or upward dog, draw your shoulders down your back, exhale, release and press to downward facing dog, hips shifting way back and up, raise your right leg, Step it to your hands and then wing you up and open. Again, you're facing the side of your mat as we come into God or Goddess one last time. Praising yourself here. Excellent. Straightening the legs, extending the arms, and then coming into Eagle one last time. Excellent. Release the arms, stretching out. Finding warrior two, vira bandrasana two, so bend your front leg, turn your back foot flat to the mat. Windmilling down, taking that vinyasa here, lowering. Inhale, peel away from the floor. And exhale, press to downward facing dog. Perfect, take your elbows back down to your mat to come into dolphin pose. Maybe lift your left leg here. And remember, it could be just a tiny, tiny little bit off the floor or even just coming to one toe pressure instead of having your full foot down. Good, replace the foot. And then decide if you wanna lift the opposite leg or not. You choose the option that's right for you. And replace the foot. Press back up to downward facing dog. And we're gonna take either those deep knee bends or a couple of hops here, you decide. So hopping or kneeling and bending. And if you're kneeling or bending the knees, it's like you bring your knees so they hover just above the mat and then you press back to downward facing dog. Perfect, and let's finish with those frog knee bends. So point your toes out towards the corners now. Let your knees go wide as you squat down and straighten and squat down and straighten 
And one more time, frog knee bends and straighten. As you turn your toes back to come into regular downward dog, take your knees down to the mat. And just moving through a couple of rounds of cat and cow. As you inhale, let your belly fall, lift your tail, lift your head in cow. And then as you exhale, round your back, scoop your tail under first, all the way up your spine, and then finish by dropping your chin down. Inhale. And exhale, moving back to cat. Moving with your breath here. Inhale. And exhale. And one more time, coming into cow. And then as you make your way into cat, take yourself all the way back to come into resting child's pose, either with the knees wide or the knees together. Bow your head down. Taking a few resting breaths here as we transition into the yin portion of today's class. Perfect, and then just slowly sitting up. So for this next posture, if you do have uh, two cushions, that would be great, or a block. And if you don't, you can absolutely do it without. Um, but I would recommend doing it with the cushion. It just helps your alignment uh, a little bit better, but it is okay without it. So if you don't have it for today, let's just go ahead and do it without, and then you can have something ready for the next time. So you're gonna want a little cushion underneath your head, and that just helps keep your neck in a good alignment. And then you're gonna lie down on your side, and let's start with our right side down on the mat. And then you're going to lie in the recovery position. So for anybody that knows first aid training, and if you don't, that would be with your top leg, your left knee, hiked up nice and high. So kind of like you're sleeping on your side. And here's where you want to tuck a cushion, a block, a foam roller underneath your knee. And then you want to stretch both arms out. I like to call this alligator. So both arms are out in front straight. Pressing together like an alligator snow. Now you're going to take your left hand and you're going to sweep it up over your head, trying to drag it on the floor as much as you can. As you come over the top, you're going to turn your palm towards the roof. Keep reaching, 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 dragging your hand on the floor as much as you can. And don't force it to the floor here. So just go wherever is accessible to you. And then turn your hand palm back down as you come back over your head. And you're just going to keep going, making a few circles as we open things up in this rolling shoulder roll. Flipping the palm back over. And don't go too fast here. And if you find a spot that's really sticky, it's really spicy in your shoulder and you want to stop there and just take a couple of extra breaths, let some things open, some tension release, that's perfect. Or if it feels better to move through it, then you're going to move through it. But all the while, you want to make sure you keep your knee down on that cushion. So if you're rolling open, but your knee is peeling way off the cushion, that means that you're trying too hard to get your hand to the floor. So let your hand be higher above if that's where it needs to be in order to keep your knee down. God, let's do one more circle here. So you probably noticed from the first circle to the last circle, things are getting a little bit easier. And we're working on mobility in our shoulders and our thoracic spine here. And just getting everything coordinating and working together. So wonderful exercise for anybody who has tight shoulders or tight through the chest. Good. So you should be back at the starting point here. And then let's go ahead and let's roll over and do it on the opposite side. And I'm just going to change my direction so you can still see me here. So this time you're lying on your left side. So it's your right knee that's going to be tucked up nice and high. Stretch your arms out and then slowly you're going to drag your right arm up over your head. And for most people, as much as we try to be in balance, there is one side that's not as good as the other. So that might mean if you're working on this practice again, or this exercise specifically in your home practice, that you do it a few more times on this side if this is your weaker side or repeat it another time today just to help 
gain some balance and find a little bit better symmetry from our left to our right side. And if it's just a little bit different, that's pretty normal. But if it's pretty markedly different, that means that you've got some work to do. And that's the same thing if your hand doesn't drag all the way on the floor. That just means that that's an area that you can work on. So it's not a bad thing. It's just a good way to work on your weaknesses and to identify where they are. So you can tell for me this side's not quite as good as my left side. I broke my collarbone quite some time ago, but there's still always just a little bit more tightness on that side than on my left side. But as I circle around, it gets easier, it gets better. So if you have some shoulder issues, this could be an exercise you do every day. I'm just finishing off that circle, coming back to rest with alligator hands. Good, and then we're slowly going to sit up here. You can just put your cushions to the side as we move into 90-90 hip stretch. So you're going to have a sit on your bum and then you're going to turn your legs into that 90-90 position. So one leg is going to be back so that it's parallel with the back edge of your mat, bending the knee. And then the front leg is going to be parallel with the front edge of your mat. So your mat works really well to give you a guide here. You can make this easier by scooching the back leg further forward. So if you see here, I don't have as big of an angle with my back hip. You can make this more challenging by bringing that leg back and extending that angle. So you decide how much help you need. As well, tucking a cushion underneath your back hip can be very helpful here, just in getting your hips to tip a little bit easier in the direction that we want them to go. And of course you can dial down the front leg a little bit, making that angle less, which will again make the posture easier. So let's settle in here. And this is where we're truly getting into the more yin portion of the class. The rolling shoulder roll is still a moving based activity. As you just start to let yourself settle down a little bit further, maybe you wanna bring your elbows down to the ground, maybe you have a cushion, and if you bring your chest down or your elbows down closer towards your foot that'll be more challenging in the stretch if you need to make it a little bit easier and you want to bring your elbows down bring them down closer to your knee so that's going to be a little bit gentler position in the stretch so just finding the right amount of stretch for you not being competitive with yourself which is often the hardest thing putting your ego aside and really just listening to what your body is telling you. Where does it feel good right now? If you're feeling really agitated, if you're feeling like you cannot stay here, then that's a sign that you're in a little bit too far or too deep. So listen to that message. Instead of getting frustrated and just jumping out of the posture, say, okay, self, I can just back off a little bit. I can make it a little bit easier and then let's see how I am from there. And if you need to back off a little bit more, back off a little bit more. And as a general rule, it's better to start a little bit easier and then as your body gets a little bit more custom and if things feel okay and it still feels pretty easy, then you can go a little bit deeper. Because remember, with yin-based postures, we're here for at least two minutes. Um, and definitely can be longer than that. So you don't want to jump in right to that far edge as hard as you can. You want to make it a little bit easier. And if you heard that commotion, that's my puppies. They're deciding that they want to be rambunctious today. They do yin when they're sleeping. Otherwise, it might be more of a vinyasa practice for them. Good, and we're slowly gonna come out of this posture. So just take your time and you can just let yourself tip a little further into that cheek and then bring your legs to swap the opposite way. Okay, or get there any way that feels good for you. So again, find the right angle and it might be slightly different from this side to the next. Switching your cushions if you want to use a cushion or a prop here. And this could even be underneath this cheek if you had a sweater or a blanket, just tuck it underneath. It doesn't need to be very much to help your hips open a little bit further. 
and then let yourself just settle in. Being as comfortable as you can, and that doesn't mean that it's not a little bit comfortably challenging, but it's not over the top. And that's where you want to rein yourself in if you're getting to that place. And that's quite indicative of our personalities often. So if you're somebody who's always really striving and really pushing hard and going fast and wanting to be the best at everything, very A personality or triple A personality as they say, um, that can be very difficult to ease back to say, I'm just going to go a little bit gentler today. I'm not going to push myself so hard. And if you're the person who's joining today's class and you're like, that is me 100%, honestly, you, those are the people or, or you, you are that person that this kind of class is targeting. So while yin can be very, very challenging for people who have that fast paced personality, it's often what they need the most because they, they are in a high state of stress quite often. They don't spend as much time relaxing. They're go, go, go all the time. And that's why sitting down, being quiet is very challenging for them. So challenge yourself, challenge yourself to stick with that quiet practice. Maybe even go onto my YouTube channel and check out some straight up yin classes. And yeah, when you find that it's really difficult for you to sit and be still and not fidget and let your mind be quiet, that's when you know, hey, that's what I need to work on. You need to work on the things that are hard for you more than the things that come really natural and really easy. And most times for those people, it's the vinyasa practice they really gravitate to. They want to do power yoga. They want to move. And that's great as well. But don't sidestep maybe the part that you're really missing, that your body and your mind, your nervous system needs. Taking one more big deep breath here. Good. And let's come on out. So as we transition into our last posture for today, again, if you have some props or some cushions, you may want to use them here. As we settle into lying bound angle, of course, you can do this with no cushions and lie flat on your mat. So I like to have a little cushion for my head and then lie across my bolster. If you have a long bolster, you won't need a cushion for your head as well. So you're going to sit your bum right near the edge of the bolster. Put your feet together, let your knees open wide, and then take a lie back making sure that your head can either reach the ground or reach your cushion. You don't want to have too much of a back bend in your neck, but a little bend is completely fine. As you let your knees open wide here, and of course, if this feels like it's too much for your hips, for your groins, you can lie with your knees closed. And I would suggest to go into this psoas releasing position instead. So take the legs a little wider than shoulder width and let your knees rest against one another or stretch your legs out straight and just enjoy the openness through the chest and the shoulders here. Close your eyes. Let yourself quiet down even more. Letting every muscle relax and let go.
learning to enjoy the quietness, the stillness. And it's okay if you're not quite there yet. If this is kind of seems like torture for you. And I speak from experience. I was that A personality, that go hard all the time. I didn't even have time for yoga at the beginning. I was like, this is a waste of my time. But as I grew and as I developed, and obviously became a yoga teacher, completely changed my outlook. So if I can get there, I know you can get there. It just takes practice. But anything worth doing is worth practicing. And you can choose to stay here a little bit longer to let yourself drift into Savasana and stay there as long as you like. Or if you feel like you've practiced long enough for today, then just slowly sitting up and coming back to your mat. If you did like today's class, please remember to give me a thumbs up, maybe shoot me a comment or ask me a question in the comments. I'm happy to help with anything yoga related. And do know that likes and comments really help the YouTube the YouTube algorithm um, recommend my video to other potential yogis. So it would really help me out. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks for joining. Namaste.